welcome to Chemistry 101. I'm Dr. Rogers, and today we're going to come up with a solution to a problem I'm currently having. I don't know if you guys have ever cooked with jalapeno peppers before, but today I have to go home and prepare my five alarm chili for a group of friends that are coming over, and it requires 12 jalapeno peppers. Now, if you've ever sliced them, you know that you tend to get this burning sensation on the tip of your fingers. It is a pain above and beyond anybody ever wants to endure. And the first time this happened, I didn't even know it was because of the peppers that this had happened. I thought maybe it was something that I touched, I didn't wash my hands properly, so my basic instinct was to go wash my hands. Now, unfortunately, that didn't do a thing. Now, as that water started to heat up, I noticed it was melting away some of the solid that was in a pan, like this grease that was in there. So I thought, okay, let me try that. Stick my fingers under there and see what happens. Well, apparently, if your fingers are burning from jalapeno peppers, don't put them under hot water. All it does is intensify to the point where it's almost unbearable. Now, I have two boys, an eight and a nine-year-old, and they both heard me screaming. So my nine-year-old boy is like, hey, how about using gloves? Sounds like a great idea for somebody who doesn't cook. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever cooked with gloves, but I value all 10 of my fingers and chopping up something that's wet and slippery was not an option. Now, I'm hoping that together, today, we can come up with a solution to this because I still have to prepare these pep the this chili later on this afternoon. Now, with that in mind, there has to be a way, but also I'm a chemist. And being a chemist by trait, there's got to be some kind of knowledge that I have that I can apply to this. Now, first we have to ask ourselves, what is it in jalapenos that makes it spicy? Well, the active ingredient in there is capsaicin. And believe it or not, capsaicin is the key ingredient found in riot gear, in pepper spray. Well, no wonder it burns like there's no tomorrow. And imagine what would have happened if I touched my eye. Now, the other thing that it said was that capsaicin is a hydrophobic chemical. Sounds like a big, fancy word. But if you break it apart, hydro, like to hydrate something, means that it's water. It's associated with water. Phobic, or having a phobia, means it's afraid. So capsaicin is none other than afraid of water. It wants nothing to do with water. Now, think of, I think of it as like a kid who's afraid of the boogeyman. That's my capsaicin that's afraid of water, all nuzzled up in bed, right? It no, has nowhere to go, but what happens when the boogeyman comes? Curl up into the fetal position, go as far away as you can from the boogeyman. Well, that's capsaicin hiding from the water. It wants nothing to do with it. Now, if it's afraid of water, capsaicin is afraid of water, it wants nothing to do with it, it doesn't bond, therefore, it's not gonna work. I can't wash my hands. That's why that didn't work initially. Now, there is this chemist rule of thumb. It states that likes dissolve likes. Anything with similar chemical and physical properties dissolves or mixes cohesively with something with similar chemical and physical properties. Think of oil and water. Those two don't mix. In this case, you have capsaicin, which is an oil. It doesn't mix with water. It doesn't want anything to do with it. But if I took two types of oils and mixed them together, no problem. Now, the best example of this is actually hot wings. When you guys order hot wings, what comes with it? Usually, you get a side of blue cheese dressing. And that's because blue cheese dressing is one of the fattiest dressings that there are. That's a good thing, because these fats are actually oils. And your hot wings contain capsaicin. And if you mix the two together, you're diluting or reducing the concentration or the intensity of that spiciness. So here we've taken real-life applications. We've talked about chemistry in a way that you never would have thought that this was chemistry. We've learned quite a few things in a couple of minutes. So we've learned that the key ingredient in jalapeno peppers is capsaicin. We learned it's also found in riot gear, pepper spray. We learned that hydrophobic is afraid of water. We learned that the chemist rule of thumb states that likes dissolve likes. We also learned that to dilute something means you're reducing the concentration or making it less intense in this concept. Now, consequently, teaching the latest generation of chemistry students has become a difficult factor 
because the old school methodology, methodology of using a whiteboard or a chalkboard is no longer as attractive as it used to be. So I have to come up with a new way to entice them. The iGen Now generation, they want answers within an instant. They can't wait for answers. And with technology advancing as much as it is, answers are available with a swipe of the finger. But truly understanding the concepts, applying the critical thinking skills, and knowing when to apply those concepts, that's a problem that we're having nowadays, especially with the class, such as chemistry, which has a negative stigma associated with it. Why study chemistry? I don't care about it. When am I ever going to use it again? Well, we just showed you a couple of examples of real-life applications. And another, pr another practical real-life applica application is a permanent marker stain. Imagine you've got a nice blouse on, and there's a permanent marker stain on there. How do you get rid of it? Especially using what we just talked about. So you have to find out what that ink in the permanent marker is dissolved in. And it's actually alcohol. So if you've got a stain, all you need to do is find something else, some kind of alcohol that you have in your house. Now make sure it's not anything that does more damage than good. So red wine, out. <laughs> but you can use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol found in your medicine cabinet. You can use vodka. Again, make sure it's clear because I know they have these fancy ones nowadays. Or you can even use hairspray. Spray it on, put it in the wash, you're done. Again, real life chemistry, real life applications. We're going above and beyond what the traditional teachings are. Now, let's take this one step further and make it even more impactful. College students nowadays are interested in science-based careers. And usually, it's in the medical field. So if I can put together a nice lecture that encompasses their future goals, I've got their attention. They're going to listen. So with that in mind, and because I'm fortunate enough to teach at a small private college, I can design my chemistry class in a very different manner. I don't use the traditional lab manuals that come with the class and the book that you get. I actually take what they're interested in at that moment in time, and I mesh it with their future goals. This way, they can have positive encouragement within one another. They know what it is that they want to do later on. They want to see how they're going to actually apply these things in real life. I'm capturing their interest. They're gaining focus. They're having discussions with friends and family about things that they never thought they would have had discussions about. This is chemistry they're talking about. When was the last time you got a phone call from somebody saying, hey, guess what I learned in chem class? And they're in college. So these are real life examples. It is up to us as future educators to change with the times. Things are evolving, times are evolving and changing, and therefore we as educators need to evolve. Now, I also teach, as I mentioned, teach chemistry. I have four research projects going on this semester. Two of those are actually doing a preventative or finding a preventative for Alzheimer's disease. One of them took into consideration what we just talked about a couple minutes ago with regards to hydrophobicity. And they had found that an excellent preventative for Alzheimer's disease is, in fact, cinnamon, which is a hydrophobic chemical. So again, real-life applications. This is a new way of teaching chemistry. Thank you.